In this video, we're going to go over how to understand fallback and churn detection in Copilot Studio. So the first thing we need to understand is, first of all, is what is fallback? And also, what is churn detection, right? And so let's start with fallback. So if we think about what fallback is in the concept of a conversational orchestration, imagine that you have this top-level intent and these are things that you program in as topics or plug-in actions or things that you want this conversational agent or copilot to be able to handle for you. And with that, you'll pro program in an action that you want it to take. So imagine I want to order a pizza. I use that as a mechanism to say that that's an intent that I want to order something. And then I handle that whole conversation of ordering a pizza. But when there is a situation that you don't recognize the intent, this is where we call something fallback. And in that, you will also see it represented inside of Copilot Studio as a unrecognized intent. This is commonly used as a place to wire in, go check a knowledge base, or go generate an answer from a rag pattern. This is where that logic falls into. And then there is this last part, which is kind of where we get into the concept of churn detection, which is what happens if I don't get an answer through any of these different mechanisms, or I go through a process through checking to see that someone is asking and not getting an answer numerous times, that would be a concept of churn detection. So a churn is the concept of someone is asking the same thing or different questions, and they're constantly getting routed to, I don't know. And when you get to, I don't know, you are trying to determine how many times do you want when you don't know before you go through a process of an escalation, which may mean open a ticket, or it may mean hand off to a live agent. So these are the basic concepts of fallback. And we'll look at how that is actually incorporated into Copilot Studio and how to manipulate that in the next part of the conversation. Okay, now we're inside of Copilot Studio and all I've done is created a basic conversational uh, Copilot that has nothing configured except for, I have said that for generative answers, I would like support.microsoft.com to be handled. So let's first do a quick demonstration of some things here. And I'm gonna turn on the tracking so that we can watch this work. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to ask it, uh, I'll just say something like, uh, my Xbox keeps rebooting. And when I say this to it, you'll see that what happened is I had an unknown intent that was fired on this side, and it went to generative answers. And you'll see here that if the answer was not blank, it's going to respond. If not, if it didn't have an answer, it goes a different path, and then it decides that that's where we would go into um, our fallback pattern, for example. So you can see here, it answered the question because of the fact that it found an answer. So now let's look at what happens on something that it, when it doesn't find the answer. Like if I say, who is Michael Jackson? And of course, support.microsoft.com is not going to know this. And what you're going to notice is up here that we notice that now it hit the fallback because no answer was found. And if you actually want to see this, you can go in and you can look at the conversational boosting. And here, it what happened so quick you didn't see it, but you'll see here that it didn't actually find an answer. And then where did it go? Well, it went to fallback. So this is the pre-configured pattern that Copilot Studio works with. So first thing it did is it fired the, the um, prioritized unknown intent because I turned on generative answers. And now I have the ability to wire that in. That's what the conversational boosting uh, topic does. But then once we go beyond that, we're now coming in and you're seeing here that it's saying that I haven't had it where I've hit this count for the fallback more than three times. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. Now, this is what we would refer to as the churn detection piece. And let's, let's see that work. So if I, uh, and we'll just copy this so you don't have to watch me type it every single time here. I'll just type in here, who is Michael Jackson? You'll see it hit, hit the same spot again. And then if, if I do it one more time, we'll hit it this time and notice that we had a different action happen. And you'll see that now we have hit the churn detection, which is saying, I got an I don't know more than three times. So if I wanted to change that, and let's just flip back over to fallback really quick so you can see this, you'll see that it actually took the path to go down to redirect to escalate. Now, could you rewire this through a different mechanism? Absolutely, like this is all within your control. What if you only want this to happen on a count of two or you wanna add additional logic? You can absolutely do that inside of Copilot Studio because of the fact that you have control of all of these things. So now let's talk about how we can infuse different generative AI capabilities and different patterns that we might want to uh, incorporate. This information is provided uh, in one of the guides that we have from our PowerCat team uh, that works at Microsoft that can help you out with like an implementation guide. I'll put the link down in the comments for this and you should definitely go check this out if you haven't seen it. It's got lots of really good information in it. So, but let's talk about these patterns now. So let's talk about the pattern one here. This is the idea of just having generative answers. It's the first level around unknown in intent detection before a fallback is initiated. So this is the out of the box configuration when you configure generative answers to be on within your implementation. So that is the concept of the conversational boosting topic that you saw me demonstrate earlier in the video. The pattern two is where we want to maybe, we want to enrich it, where you can say, I wanna go through uh, fallback and you wanna say, Maybe I want to also, before, uh, maybe I went through generative AI, but I didn't get the answer. Or maybe what I want to do is say, check a actual existing Q&A uh, maker or a uh, CQA type of implementation. For those that don't know, there is a service in Azure that can do this. And you can wire this in where you can have your own custom inputs of different question and answer pairs. So imagine you wanna wire that in, in front of the generative answers component. So if you think about it, that would be configured by in your conversational boosting, just going in and adding that additional logic to check that before you check the actual generative AI configuration, and then you would move in to fallback. Then we have this pattern three, which is maybe I have a recognized intents, like we talked about earlier in the video, where those different intents maybe route you to go through a knowledge lookup pattern, but have different topics that point you to a different knowledge lookup system. You could even think about that in these worlds, you could say, maybe I want to have a different generative answers node that based upon some sort of variable determines which one I'm going to use. And it could be a situation where it's not even just generative answers. Maybe you want to uh, have your conversation shift on unknown intent or based upon a topic to allow you to say, I wanna hand this to an Azure AI Studio implementation if certain criteria is met. And if not, I'm gonna hand it to a a generative answers, but all of them will come back to, if I did not get an answer and hit churn detection, user doesn't get stuck in a conversation loop or isn't getting frustrated on being stuck in a conversation where they constantly are being told, I don't know. This video was helpful for you and to understand better about fallback and churn detection. And as always, you can like and subscribe to my channel and feel free to try Copilot Studio by going to aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.